you will likely have heard about the African proverb. Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up. It knows it must run faster than the fastest lion or it's gonna get killed. And every morning a lion wakes up. It knows it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it's going to starve to death. It doesn't matter whether you're a lion or a gazelle, when the sun comes up, you'd better be running. However, there's more to life than just running. We need to have a clear direction of where we should be running towards. Otherwise, we might end up running around in circles and not make any progress despite all of our effort. So for those of you who have read my 30 days and 30 years book, or who've joined me for my talks on building an innovative culture and shaping breakthrough mindsets for breakthrough performance, you'll know that I'm not a fan of the annual budgeting and planning process. It's the same reason why 90% of New Year's resolutions are not achieved. What tends to happen is that both at an individual level or at a company level, these New Year plans or budgets focus on outcome goals, right? whether it's a revenue or profit growth, increase in market share or launching new products, or at a personal level, common outcome goals include wanting to lose you know, five or 10 kilograms of weight, or wanting to get a promotion or a new job, or to save enough for a holiday or a down payment for a house. The first challenge with setting outcome goals at the company or individual level is that these targets are set based on what was already achieved this year. And so this creates incremental thinking, right? Maybe for next year we'll do 5% more or 10% or more. Real breakthroughs don't come from this incremental approach, but from a zero-based approach. If you could start with a blank sheet of paper without any legacy constraints, would you really continue to do the same thing next year as you did this year? Are you truly guided by your core purpose? What really matters to you? Or are you going to continue doing the same thing because that's comfortable? That's what you understand and what you think is possible. For me, more important than these outcome goals are behavior goals. Setting annual goals can create tunnel vision because you're focused on this outcome 12 months away. But the world that we live in today, and 2020 has showcased this, is that it's so unpredictable, it's fast changing and it's volatile. Whatever assumptions that we've set for our annual goals are likely going to be obsolete in one to two months. And we run the danger of missing out on new emerging opportunities in this periphery or edges of our horizon. So I'm a big believer in behavior goals, daily and weekly actions, and regular reflections of the changes to our external environment, our internal compass, and what things we need to keep changing and tweaking. So it's not about the amount of weight we want to lose or how much healthier or happier we want to be in 12 months time, but what are we going to do each day and each week, right? So for me, it's, I'm gonna average 420 to 490 minutes per week at an active heart rate level. Now, incidentally, if you're tracking your steps, please go beyond tracking steps to number of minutes a day at an active heart rate, right? Especially in the 100 to 150 zone. I also focus on quiet mornings or learning something new each week, right? Mainly through books. And most importantly for me, learning and growing from spending time with people who inspire and energize me every week. So I hope more companies and more leaders will consider putting a much larger emphasis on weekly behavior goals rather than annual targets. Organizations and cultures that focus on weekly practices of reflecting, recalibrating and learning will be able to move much faster and be truly agile and thrive in today's era of speed. So, my very best wishes to you, your organization, and your loved ones for the festive season, and all the very best for an exciting year ahead. As always, let's keep things positively personal.